Something that sets us apart as an institution as far as math is concerned uh, is our ability to balance the procedural fluency uh, with conceptual understanding. Uh, we have an incredible group of teachers who are able to uh, not only encourage children to think flexibly about numbers, but to apply their flexible problem solving to real world, um, to real world skills, problems, challenges. Um, so this is not the top-down, do-as-I-show-you type of instruction that you may get at other schools. Um, at Orchard, children are really active participants in building their own mathematical understanding, and really that's the foundation uh, to be a lifelong mathematical problem solver. We are preparing kids for jobs that don't even exist yet. And a lot of these jobs, kids are going to be using technology that allows them to be flexible with numbers. They're not going to be just sitting and crunching the same algorithm over and over. They're going to have to look at a problem and look at all the different solutions to that problem and assess which is going to be the best solution to that problem. If we've only taught kids that there's one solution to every problem, then they're not going to be these creative thinkers that the world is going to need because that's truly what we need. So when we always go at math with, there are many ways to get there and you have to find the way that makes the most sense to you and then you celebrate that by giving kids the opportunity to stand in front of the class and share their strategies and then to ask each other how they learned from all these different strategies that they heard, that's where they realize that there are many different solutions to a problem, you just have to find the best way to attack it and that's truly what the workforce is looking for today. It's not necessarily speed, it's how creative can you be to find the best solution. I made a list of multiples of six, and then when we stopped, we realized that we both had 30 on our list, and then we added one because we knew that there would have to be one left over each time. So we got 31. I like the way Riley worked on one list and you worked on the other, because that was a pretty efficient way to share the workload. Round of applause. At Orchard, yes, we teach them the skills, but we also teach them the broader aspect of numeracy that goes well beyond just the addition and the subtraction. It's about understanding those numbers and their application in the world around them, which then in turn leads to better citizens in the populace, people who can question data that's provided to them, people who can understand data or at least ask the right questions to understand the data, which then are going to enhance everything they do in their lives. we start working with patterns in pre-kindergarten. And we work with patterns that are relative to students of that age three and four. And we keep working with patterns all the way through. So that when we get to algebra, the idea of patterns that go along with what algebra really is, the representation of patterns, students are much more able to grasp the, and understand algebra. And that's really important since algebra is the gateway to college success post-college success. Um, in many states, like Indiana, if you're going to a public school, algebra really is that key for high school graduation. Math is about solving problems. And by solving problems, I don't mean solving three plus four. It's about solving greater problems that have meaning to our students. So it's the application of mathematics and utilizing it to build their skill sets. So by showing that application of mathematics, we're then creating a much more rounded citizen as they grow up. So not all of our students are gonna be people who go into STEM careers, nor do we want everybody to go into a STEM career. But what's really important that Orchard does is to help build people who are mathematically literate and STEM literate. So what that means is it provides them the ability to question and to understand when things are presented to them. So if they're given numbers, they don't just assume that the numbers are correct and accurate. They have that ability to question them and to understand why they need to question them and the things they need to ask around those things. I can really get to know what works for each and every kid. And when they hear each other talk about their different strategies, then they start to think a little bit differently. And that's when you know they're really catching on and really thinking about what their peers are saying because they may 
use a different strategy during the next fluency activity. And that's what you want to start seeing them do is that each fluency activity, they're kind of adapting their strategy based on what they've learned from their peers or what they've learned in class or just experience with each of these fluency activities. Having had the chance to see math taught across the state and the nation, I know that Orchard is the best place for my family.